Hello, so we have been privileged to be joined by the President of the Ireland Cricket Board, Mr. Philip. Uh, how, are you, how, how are you enjoying your West Indies tour so far? The senior boys have done so far well. Yeah, that was a great result in Kingston, uh, Sabina Park. Yeah. And uh, it's given the senior team so much confidence. Yeah. Uh, two-one win. It's the first away victory in a series. Yeah. So it's, it's huge for uh, Irish cricket. Well, so, uh, at this point, you know, we are having this international cricket around the world under difficult circumstances. We, you were the, I'm sure you've seen that the Ireland bio bubble thing, what happened in USA was unfortunate. So how are you, how are the cricketers managing with this new thing? Well, uh, with great difficulty because there's a mental side and there's, there's a physical side to a lesser extent. But it's, it's, it's difficult. Our boys here have been here in, um, the, the junior Indies, boys. The junior boys have been here since the 27th of December, mm. and they have had uh, issues coping with the bubble. Mm. But their parents arrived out here um, this week, mm. and they are so pleased to see them. It's given them, it's, it's reinvigorated them, and it's given them uh, more confidence. So bubbles are difficult. And the younger you are, the more difficult it is. Yeah, and looking forward to looking like Ireland cricket. I mean. Ireland played their first home test match in 2017, Pakistan. Pakistan, 2017. Yeah. But after that, they haven't hosted any test. Match. No, and it's a, it's it's a it's a it's a an issue which um, the board are aware of, mm. and uh, one of the big issues for Irish cricket is the cost of test cricket. Mm. Just the DRS system, it's something like twenty two and a half thousand pounds a day. To, mm. to, you're talking for a test match, that's one hundred and ten thousand sterling. Mm. Mm. So uh, it's, a, it's a big cost hosting in test cricket, and we don't have a purpose built venue. We have to build a venue oh. for home test matches. Oh. But we're going to Harare at the end of March, early April, and we're playing a test match in, um, in, in Harare. So, I mean, after getting this test status from the ICC, um, if you, like Afghanistan, you have seen that both Ireland and Afghanistan got the same time, and Afghanistan have been playing their matches. You know, test. They have. They were. They were supposed to play one in Australia, but I don't know whether. I think that that is not happening. But for from Ireland's point of view, I mean, it can be a good. You know, it can be a good rally point for the teams traveling to England, right? Like they can play one test match in Ireland, then they travel to England. So are you? Are you like? Well, it's a question of linking in with the English cricket board. To, yeah. Uh, to do that, um, I, I wouldn't say we've been. Proactive and, and hosting Test cricket at the moment, mm. um, it's a challenge for us financially and uh, mm -hmm. putting the venue together. But um, certainly, uh, you know, there's been comments in the media by Andrew Balburn mm. and our captain, yep, but also by course. Paul Sterling, mm. about we need to play more Test cricket. Of course. So I think we've got to take on board what the players are saying. And. Uh, uh, I mean, okay, fine. Uh, test cricket can be a financial. At this point, I can use the word burden to Ireland cricket. But uh, if we have like domain, white ball cricket also in Ireland, international white ball cricket, some of the most of the matches we have seen that weather interruption is a big issue in Ireland. It is. It is. So, what the board is thinking uh, to cope with this, cope up with this challenge? Well, that's good. the weather is a huge challenge. A huge you know? challenge, yes. And yeah, we do lose. Uh, some some days, but climate change is working in our favour at the moment. <laughs> it's, we, we, you know, last summer we had a very good summer. We hosted South Africa. Yeah. All the games were played. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get any washed out uh, days. So uh, that's about the only positive thing you can say about climate change. Oh. It's, but uh, it is it is an issue. We, this summer we've got New Zealand and we've got. Um, um, who else have we got? But we've got two series, yeah. And, okay. Uh, you know, there is a chance that we could get washed out, and we were criticised. West Indies were in Belfast in 2020, and they got washed. Sorry, 2019, hmm. they got washed out in, in Belfast. Yeah, the Tri Cities, lot, Bangladesh got, was also. We got a lot of criticism for that. But it was played in September, and that is a big risk. Playing cricket in September. Yeah, of Ireland. course, of course, and um, I mean. Fairly from the point of view of Indian fans, when can we see a bilateral series between India and Ireland? Well, there's, there's talk of India coming to play a T20 in Ireland uh, this summer. It's looking pretty positive. I don't think the dates are confirmed yet. 
but it is the series looking like one one of game is looking uh, it's, it's, it's one or two, two t20s t20s yeah yeah, so yeah. That, you know, that, that is huge for us because the broadcaster is, is, is massive you know, that game those games on, are on their own I think, deliver revenues more than the rest of the summer so it's, it, it is massive another big challenge for ireland maybe uh, you know we had the 50 over world cup in the uk but ireland were not there That's so right. 10 team world cup is a big yeah thing. We, we we're not we're not in favor if we'd like to see a 12 team world cup but we're now going to um, uh, the, the t20 qualifiers in muscat mm. mm. at the end of february and uh, we need to qualify out of that to go to the t20 World Cup in Australia, mm -hmm. which will be at the tail end of this year, I think. But uh, yeah, we know, you know, ICC are um, of a mind that ten team World Cup is mm -hmm. uh, suits them better from TV. And so yeah, broadcaster friendly. But Ireland, I'm, I'm sure that along with you, Ireland, other members also will be, you know, lob lobbying or pushing for yeah, ICC. Yeah, yeah. We, we are, you know, we. We need to, we want to be there at the, at the World, uh, Cricket World Cup Finals. And uh, it favours us if there's 12, because 10 is generally tough for us. Yeah. One more thing I'd like to know, I mean, um, from financial point of view, uh, Ireland have lost quite a few cricketers doing it, when Owen Morgan is obviously the biggest. Um, so, what are these senior players are given a central contract or what? Yes, uh, the, the Irish players are all on central contracts now because um, ECB took a decision about two or three years ago mm. that um, they wouldn't allow Irish qualified players to play county cricket mm. because we're a test nation yeah. and uh, ECB also. So that was a big, um, big decision on, on ECB part. Mm. Paul Sterling was playing for Middlesex. Yeah. He had to relinquish his contract, um, and he lives in the UK, mm. so he's a, he, uh, it's an extraordinary situation. That basically, being a UK employee, he wasn't allowed to work uh, for Middlesex, effectively. Mm. But uh, the decision has been made, and uh, yeah, he's he's now playing a lot more international cricket. He's playing uh, T20s in Bangladesh, Pakistan. The pro, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't think he's been to the CPL, no. and he's been to. He's played to he's played a ten ball, um, ten over a bash in uh, Dubai, mm. organised by Afghanistan back in January. Okay, so I mean, ECB is a coordination with ECB for a board like Ireland. Is coordinate coordination with ECB is very important. Right? Like, I mean, yeah, it is. It is important because we are sharing the 2030 uh, World Cup. Uh, we, along with Scotland and yeah. ECB, will be hosting that. Yeah. So that's very important. That that was it. Yeah, yeah. that getting that you know getting that event is a big big boost oh, for Ireland. It's nine years. It's eight years away now. Yeah, but so, uh, but uh, it's so important. And on the back of that, we will get government commitment to maybe build a purpose-built stadium, which is the key actually, because that will allow us to play more test cricket. Mm. But um, that, that that is critical. If, uh, by hosting a, a World Cup, the government will give us capital funding for, uh, for hopefully a national stadium. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, and finally, one last question for me: What is your expectation from the boys in this Under-19 World Cup? Uh, well, to acquit themselves well, we have got to win against Uganda. Mm -hmm. Today is very tough against India. They look like one of the best sides. They beat mm -hmm. South Africa comfortably mm -hmm. on Saturday. So, um, I think um, if we can get uh, acquit ourselves well, a win will be a huge bonus. <laughs> I think it's more likely maybe on Friday against South Africa than today. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. The plate group is also there. I mean, the boys will be playing. Yes, yeah, they, they, are, they, will, they will stay for the plate and uh, hopefully we'll get, I think, our best result is about 10th or 12th in the, in the under 19 World Cup. Mm. So, uh, you know, let's hope we can win. There, we have seen quite a few young cricketers. The wicket keeper scored a hundred in the, on the other day. So, um, how are you planning to groom this cricketer to, you know, fast track them maybe for the to the senior yeah, level? Well, Joshua Cox is interesting because he, he has never played cricket in Ireland. He is, and there's been some controversy about him being picked oh. for this under 19. Where he's from South Africa, mm. uh, but he's he's got grandparents who are Irish, mm. and um, he um, he is. 
I'm not sure what the next step will be, but you know, if he's if he's promising, they will just uh, you know it depends whether he's willing to move from South Africa to Ireland and uh, take up an, ac an academy contract, and, um, a full contract. No, um, not not only just for him, for the other players also, the, young, the promising youngsters will be. Yeah. After that, well, you will. We have a lot of changes. Uh, you know, our team, is, our national team, mm. is very young at the moment. Mm. It's, um, I think, it's an average age of about twenty-three. Mm. So we have a lot. We, you know, we we had a very good side mm. uh, ten years ago, mm. uh, but they've all retired now. So uh, we, we have had to rebuild. So we, it is. Uh, it's the future is quite promising for. How we bring through this generation mm. that remains to be seen. Okay, thank you for talking to us. I mean, it has been a pleasure. And there you go. Uh, that was the president of the Island Group, Mr. Philip, talking to us. Mm.